Hi, John Fugler here. Let's spend a few minutes retreating with God. Our theme this week is encouragement, and sometimes we're the ones that need the most encouragement, and we have to turn to the Lord because the depth of his encouraging comfort is absolutely miraculous. When our heart is broken, there's only one person who can comfort our soul, and that's God. Knowing that and experiencing it are two different things. As we travel through scripture, we find powerful verses on comfort. And I want to share some of those with you. You may need those right now. Let, let's just read them together slowly. Uh, let's sit back and let them sink in. Psalm 147.3, he heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. Matthew 5.4, blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Psalm 23.4, Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. 2 Corinthians 1, 3, and 4, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our affliction. It's one of my favorite passages. Psalm 119.50 says this, This is my comfort in my affliction, that your promise gives me life. 2 Thessalonians 2.16 and 17, May our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God our Father, who loved us and by his grace gave us eternal encouragement and good hope, encourage your hearts and strengthen you in every good deed and word. (laughs) Isn't that rich? As you've listened to these passages, um, are you as encouraged and strengthened as I am? Uh, You know, I, I know I'm not alone in my grief, pain, loss, or sorrow when I go to these passages. I'm comforted. God himself comes alongside me and he heals my broken heart. He binds up my wounds. He blesses me in my mourning. He walks with me in the deepest valley. He grants me mercy, gives me life. He loves me. Such rich promises. We need these promises at some point in our life. Now might be that time for you. God gives us more than promises, though. He loves us so much that he gives himself to us. In times of pain and loss, he gives his very self to us. <laughs> and we can echo the words of David in, in Psalm 23, for you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. But that's not all. God knows that in the pain, uh, it's often so great and the grief so overwhelming that we can't even cry out to him. We're speechless. We can't form the words. When we're at that point, we have this assurance from Romans 8.26. This is a beautiful promise. Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. For we do not know what to pray for as we ought, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us with groanings too deep for words. The depth of God's comfort, it's indescribable. It's beautiful. And it's ours. How encouraging is that? The next time you need God's comfort, come back to all these verses. Pray for help as you cling to Jesus and gratefully receive God's comfort. Let's go deeper. We're going to go into Romans 8, 26 and 28, 26 through 28. And as we do that, uh, the other day I asked you to download the spiritual assessment a personal spiritual assessment I've worked up. And if you did that, that's great. Let me know what you found out about yourself if you care to share that. But this is a great opportunity to kind of take a look and an honest look at where you stand in your relationship with God right now. Is it fresh? Is it deep? Is it healthy? Is it not? We'll take this three minute, just three minutes, a spiritual assessment, and then follow through on the probing questions I ask afterwards in the assessment, and you can pick it up at retreatingwithgod.org. Just download it, and after we're done here, you can go ahead and take it. That's at retreatingwithgod.org, the personal spiritual assessment. 
Romans 8, 26 through 28, in the same way, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. We do not know what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us with wordless groans. And he who searches our hearts knows the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for God's people in accordance with the will of God. And we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. So that passage, it was out of the NIV. It's a little bit different than the body of the devotional we just went through, but I wanted to have it jump out at you even more and also put it in context. I'm going to read that again before we go into reflect. Okay, so absorb this. In the same way, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. We do not know what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us through wordless groans. And he who searches our heart knows the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for God's people in accordance to the will of God. And we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. Let's reflect. What things stand out in this passage? Do I see anything new about God or does this passage reinforce something I already know about him? What is the theme or message of this passage, or even multiple themes and messages? Then let's ask these key application questions about the passage. Is there a promise for me to claim? Then these next three questions, you may not find them directly here in the passage, but as always, we want to be open to what God might be leading us and speaking to us about. And he may be even bringing other passages to mind as we consider this, related passages, or the Lord has just laid something on your heart that going through this today has has triggered. So we'll we'll take these three questions, okay? Is there a sin for me to avoid? Is there a command for me to obey? Is there an example for me to follow? Now let's go to the final most important question about knowing Jesus and knowing the Father. In what way or ways do I know the Father or Jesus better as a result of reflecting on this passage? Now let's relate to God. As a result of reflecting on the passage, take time to pray about the things the Lord has brought to mind. Prayer is all about your relationship with God, so enjoy a conversation with him now. 
And if there's time, uh, if you're hurting right now, and you're really just seeking God's comfort and his presence, now's the time to just pour your heart out to him and, uh, and bring requests that you came with. Let's go ahead and do that right now, give you time to do that, and then I'll close us. Father, I pray for my brothers and sisters here who are going through suffering right now, and they need your comfort. I pray for you to comfort them in a miraculous way. And if they don't even have the words to pray that you would intercede, you promise you will, with your words, Holy Spirit. And thank you for that. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, as we go from here, I would encourage you to take the spiritual self-assessment, and you can pick it up at retreatingwithgod.org. The words of the Apostle Paul in Philippians 3.8, What is more, I consider everything a loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord. What a fresh verse each time I read it. Uh, Retreating with God is a ministry of fresh faith 24-7, a place where you can retreat with God and get to know him more deeply. God bless you, and we'll see you again next time.